Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all already know what it is. It's your brother Sarnetta. We back in effect. Get this information to the people. You already know what it is. I'm here with the legend. Rod Hayes is in the building, man. So I want to definitely, I know a lot of people out there know who this brother is. I've been checking him out. I'm the one that's late. You know what I'm saying? I'm the brother that's late, but the brother know who I am. The brother been out there giving and delivering this information. And um, I just came up with a title. That's not the brother title. I came up with the title because, I, I mean, that's a question I'm going to ask him. We have always been here, not in Africa, but Blacks in America. So we're going to figure this out and see where he go with that. So without any further ado, my brother Rod, um, Introduce yourself to the audience. Let them know what you're about, my brother. Peace. Thank you, brother Sarnetta. First off, peace to the guys and nerfs. Um, I, I've been, been um, teaching for about the last five years in the public domain, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And a lot of people don't know the, the real history right we all know that history is a lie that's agreed upon how we know it because they told us who told us the people who was writing history so if they told us it's a lie that they all agreed upon what's the truth where is our real historical information we have to first understand who we are before um we can begin to reconstruct our history. We, we started with the slave ship narrative. <clears throat> the slave ship narrative is illogical and unreasonable when analyzed with critical thinking, right? So the, they have trade ships <clears throat> that wasn't slave ships from the same contemporary time. They have ships that's older from um, people who had shipwreck transporting gold and silver. You can go to uh, um, YouTube and Google shipwrecks on YouTube and they'll show you all these shipwrecks, but none of them is a slave ship. We have been yet to find an intact slave ship to verify the slave narrative that they gave us. <clears throat> So um, being that I'm, I'm come from under the banner of Larry Hoover Growth and Development, that's my chief, right? A lot of us don't know we native to the land because we've been saturated by the dogmatic doctrine, morals and dogma, Albert Pike. That's the uh, operation manual and the protocols of Zion is the blueprint. <clears throat> the defense manual is Dr. Neely Fuller's United Independent Compensatory Code for Breaking the Chains of White Supremacy. I know you read that one. That's the, the, the defense manual to fight against the morals and dogma and to fight against the protocols. Now, they told us <clears throat> the protocols of Zion is a mythical and fictitious document but when you analyze the document and say, are these people that they accusing of these things in this book, doing these things that they say in this book in real life? And all nine areas of people activity that Dr. Neely Fuller explains in the compensatory code points to the, everything that they said that they, they doing in the protocols. Everything they want to control is one of them nine areas of people activity. I say add the TIF because all of them is contingent on health. <clears throat> so health would be the common denominator to the other nine, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. If your health breaks down, which they doing that actively, the Rockefellers and Rothschilds already said why they was creating our modern educational system when they established it. That wasn't established by us. <clears throat> so 
the slave ship narrative got people believing that we all from Africa. <clears throat> but the melanated original beings that we are, we spontaneously emerge all over the planet simultaneously. It ain't no out of Africa. It ain't no out of Asia. It ain't no out of, it's all over. We was everywhere. If you go to uh, Ivan Van Sertima, African presence in early Europe, African presence in early Asia, African presence in early America, they came before Columbus, right? <clears throat> He's showing you with the documentation, when you check his references, all of the references concurred that we was already here, right? There is architecture, petroglyphs all over the Americas that attest to us. Right. They go ahead, sir. Now, when you say we were already here, from where are you saying that there was not a slave ship that came from Africa to America? Or I'm there were the Africans or black people here way before that even happened? There was already melanated, kinky hair, Aksumi over here. But that's not that's just a, a, a like a glimpse into the fairy tale. The reality is, is on the eastern seaboard from Maine to the bottom of Brazil and all of the islands, the royal families from this land intermarry with royal families from Africa for thousands of years. That's not new. You know, on the Pacific uh, shoreboard, we was trading and intermarrying with Asians. So this is what gives us this varying look in our in, in the native community, right? Not to mention that when the settlers came, they brought the, the, the slaves, the servants that they had with them. Well, if you don't know who the Romans fought, if you don't know who the Prussians fought, if you don't know the different rise and fall of empires, you don't know who their slaves were. The slave castes was all captives of war. They were POWs, the same as we was over here. The only difference is that when they was exiled from Europe in the Inquisition and the Revolution, the Spanish Inquisition, the French Revolution, <clears throat> they brought the servants that were Mongolians, Huns, and Vedics. Because up until that time, that's where they sheep dipped their slaves from before Europe went into Africa for slaves, right? So they didn't really need African slaves. African slaves that they captured out of Africa was normally a tradesman that had a special skill and they was taking them to build the infrastructure of Europe, right? But the, all of these are Johnny come lately uh, um, societies. What we call modern society is really a big giant scam being ran on all of us. And as long as we fight each other, they can continue running a scam. We know that the judicial system is, uh, <clears throat> is owned by the crown of England because King George III is the one who first gave the charter to the Bar Association in Savannah, Georgia in 1863, right? And that brought the barristers, which is a class of royalty that um, is their job is to go through the paperwork for the lords. Right. The lords are one branch. Then you have your barons. Your barons is the ones who administer land. This is where you get your land baron and your landlords from. Question. I see the chat is talking about DNA. So let me, let's talk about that. Talk to us about DNA and why DNA testing is not accurate, according to you or many others that be out there. That talk so one of the problems with DNA is this. On the paperwork that you file in for a DNA test, mm -hmm. it tells you that it's for entertainment purposes only. Legally speaking, what that mean is as long as they have a narrative to uphold, then they can give you whatever result to the test suit their narrative. Then when you get back past the, your grandparents, 
or your great grandparents, you have too many diverse ancestors to pick one out and say, you from Sierra Leone, you from Ghana. It's too many ancestors at that point. When you get, well, I think like six generations, you're talking like 84 different ancestors on each side. Right. It's too many. The numbers don't they don't crunch correctly. Then they're only testing what's a small portion of the total DNA chain. In order to tell you where you are from in the specific part only is checking for what they call a phenotype. You got genotype, which is your genetic makeup, and then you have your phenotype, which tells you what you look like. So when they test in the phenotype, a Mississippian, he looked like an African, but he ain't from Africa. That's your old Olmecs, Toltecs, Aztecs, Incans, and Mayans. Them was all heavily melanated peoples, right? Mm-hmm. And they have the gods in their paintings is painted with black skin or real dark red skin. Right. So when we looking at the totality of what's going on on the land, so the DNA is only one part of the equation. Right. Because you got something called genetic memory. Most of us are unaware of genetic memory. In modern terms, we said ancestors talking to you. That's your genetic memory active. Right. You hear your ancestors because when you see your mama in there praying to some um, guy that don't got nothing to do with us, she ain't really praying to God. She really programming her DNA Would to you? activate yeah, certain. Go ahead. Finish off. She activating her DNA to call forth something inside of her. Right. That can only come through the portal. Remember Elijah Muhammad say that the prayers of the woman is answered through the womb? Right. Right. So when the mother is p- praying, she's actually programming. Now, like, they gave us... Say that again, man. We forgot that. Um, Elijah Muhammad said what? The prayers of the woman is answered through the womb. Oh, God. Teach. Remember in church, they played this song, Jesus on the Mainland? Yeah. Jesus is ISIS. Never heard that one. Go to the Greek in the strong concordance and you're going to find the word Jesus to spell I-E-S-O-U-S. Apply the rules of grammar to the pronunciation. Uh-huh. The hard I cancels out the E and it uh, makes a hard S, ice. And then the O-U becomes one vowel when they use together. And it sounds like, uh, which makes by the doubling of the vowel makes the last S go hard. S, Isis. It's in the Greek. It's not even that hard to find. Now, there's two people in the biblical story in the red that's talking. One of them is the son. They call Emmanuel in the Bible. This is all stolen from our history that was written in hieroglyphics. Okay, it's the story I, of Horus in Isis. Yeah, I want you to hold that for a minute because um, I have a follow-up question dealing with the DNA, and I don't want to get it lost. But um, would you say that our connection with the actual land and natural surroundings is more accurate than DNA testing? And if so, please explain why. Okay, so the people that comes from a land, the land actually talks to them. Okay, oh, go ahead, man. Okay, so it don't come across and more happen along these lands. You need to be somewhere for your birthright at the close of the age and the opening of the new age. This is at the close of Pisces, opening of Aquarius. Your DNA going to start telling you where you belong on the planet. If you belong in Africa, you're going to have a clarion call in your soul to say, I got to get back to Africa. But if you're from somewhere else, let's say you're from the Philippines, your clarion call is going to be driving you to return to the Philippines for your birthright. 
these are codes in the DNA through the mitochondrial directly connected to the soil of the earth. The DNA, uh, you know who uh, Henry Louis Gates is? Yes. You remember when he was telling the story about Oprah wanted to declare she was Zulu and his partner in the office called him and say he doing Oprah DNA and he say she said she was Zulu on the um on the TV. He said, what you want me to do? He said, shit, we making it up as we go anyway. Make her Zulu. And the DNA test came out and she was Zulu. Can't hear you, sir. Yes. Um, you know, we are a channel that deals with a lot of sources. And I know this is at the spirit of the moment. I want my people to relax. I just contacted the brother yesterday where I asked them to come on and let's just freestyle and we're gonna, um, I'm gonna just have some questions for him. So it ain't like he put together a program to give y'all, cause I'm quite sure if he did, he would have came with some sources with that. But y'all can go and look it up. He's um, giving you the source verbally. Y'all can go and look it up and see what the brother is saying. You know, we have a lot of scholars over here and that's what they do. They like to check, fact check and see if, what you're saying is correct. And so um, let me ask you, are the, are the woke conscious, are the woke conscious blacks the biggest obstacle between us and the truth of who we are? Yeah. Because what, this is what's going on in our community right now. They stole our original identity and they gave us a potpourri of sub identities to assume most of them are designations in law that has nothing to do with what we are or they exonyms an exonym is when somebody other than you named you for who you are mm -hmm. right <clears throat> so a lot of the terms we use to apply to ourselves come from foreign um social engineering programs being used on us as a people America is the police state. This is why we have them. Those are branches of military. The police is a foreign body politic operating under the pretense of a public service. They work. The United States is not our government. It's a private corporation pretending to be our government. Right. They masquerade and they tell you that it's not even a secret. And then they laugh at us because we actually believe it's our government and we literally give up our lives to spill our blood for a right to vote. And no voter has ever elected a president. Right. Mm -hmm. The president is elected by the Electoral College. And before you can be a member of the Electoral College, they got to already know who you finna vote for. This is how they can give you the projection of how the election is going to turn out until around 98 when G. Dummy took power. When G. Dummy took power, they normalized fixing the vote. Right. Overriding the electoral college by putting them in a um, position where they have to go with the popular vote or making it appear as if the popular vote is voting with the Electoral College, however you want to say it. It's right. still fraud upon the people because the government, we not elected no president. Soon as we understand that, the faster we can wake up. We, we don't elect the president. The president is selected by a group of people in a smoke-filled room smoking cigars and playing uh, backgammon on our life. Right? It's, this is over with. The American corporation, the legal fiction is done. It's a done deal. Now we have to go back to the tribal law, which we call the great law. The great law comes under the matriarchy. Right? And a lot of people got matriarchy and feminism totally confused. Break it down. Feminism is the female supporters of patriarchy's enforcement mechanism. 
whenever it looked like the patriarchs is going to fall, they send a bunch of drag queens out to push what they call women's liberation. And this is why in our community, in the 60s and 70s and 80s, our women was listening to all of the women's liberation talk. And the women with liberation talk told them they don't need us. The women don't need a man. Fuck that nigga. Right? No, no profanity, brother. Excuse me, my brother. Yeah. But this is the psychology that they have been implanting in these little girls. But up, uptown, what they teaching them, that fairy tale love story, right? They teaching them how to treat the men that come in their life, but down they come in, a, in our community with a women's liberation movement telling our women they don't need a man. And then it's enforced by the government through the food stamp program and welfare. So it's really being enforced to get rid of us, the men, from out of the household. All right. I right. want everybody, um, as y'all listening, tuning in, we got Ron Hayes in the building. And um, when I open up the floor later on in the conversation, y'all can ask your question, one question at a time. So make sure it's your best question. Um, uh, talk to us, brother. Who were the very first people? What is the chronology story of our people? So those are two questions. And what is the chronology story of our people? Who were the very first people, according to your um, research? And, and talk to us and give us some chronology. So when you say first people, it becomes immediate subjective to religious rhetoric. Uh oh, go ahead. Because we was talking a little something about that yesterday too, and you the right. religious right. the religious rhetoric have us thinking that we all came from Adam and his rib, mm -hmm. right? Which yep. is the most foolish thing. That it don't even it don't even agree with you in in the same book that we all come from Adam and his rib, but. They never read before Adam was created in Genesis 1 26 that a whole bunch of people was created. Uh oh, uh oh, go ahead. Right. But even before we get to that, before 1492, we didn't know what a Bible was. We didn't know what a Quran was. That didn't have anything to do with us over here. The Torah didn't have anything to do with us. We weren't Hebrews, we was different tribes all across the land, set up doing our own thing. Sometimes we fought amongst each other, but it wasn't until the enemy put guns in our hand and taught us how to kill each other that it went to that far, right? So when we talking about the original people, the original people of the earth was a pack of sisters, melanated, kinky hair, chocolate dark sisters. That's we talking Atlantean Lemurian um, eras, right? And the world has been through a whole bunch of cycles, and some cycles end with what we call horrific catastrophe at the end. This one is supposed to end with a seamless transition into the age of Aquarius where the matriarchy restores the balance to the land by the women first finding balance. And then the brothers is going to respond because they host us through mitochondria to be here. At some point, women decided to no longer give children through parthogenesis. They decided to make something called a mate. This is when the earth went into, from, went into what we call polarities and the, uh, the law of opposites begin to apply, right? Now, you have some people, they call themselves the gods, and they just a whole lot more advanced in technology than us, but they not more powerful than us. If we had the access to the same technology, we would be on the equal footing with them or superior footing. And these is the people that we've been fighting for the last 6,000 years. And this is why they say the devil has 6,000 years to rule. 
Um, I agree, Sister Freedom. Open your mind to new information if you not heard it. And and this is a um, very powerful, right? And you become just like the religious mind. When someone attacks your religion, you automatically shut down. So now when you hear something new, you automatically shut down. Instead of writing it down, checking out what the brother's saying, then come back and say, well, you know what, brother? I found this or I found that. That's how you do the research. Don't automatically dismiss. Not everybody, but I'm just saying a few people in, in, mm -hmm. in you know. So understand that, man. Do the research, brother. Um, are we the original people of the Americas? Yes, we are. Not well, not all of us, but yeah. most of us. Right? My mama used to tell it to me like this. She said, they the few, we the many. They the few, we the many. But who is they? See, we in a we coming out of a conjure war. We talking priests in robes doing rituals and rooms with pentagrams on the floor, drinking blood and raping babies. Mm, damn. Right? This is the, the voodoo source or the, the sorcery they use and on us. The second constitution was written. Use Kayak's filters to find hotels that have the free stuff you want. Download the Kayak app now written in the in force in the Bible where it say that the blood of the righteous shall not be spilled in vain. Right? So now they write it in his blood. We bound for the duration of the contract. The contract could have been up, but didn't nobody see the problem. All of the ones that had the right to close the contract got murdered. Literally. Plans 13 next got murdered. Um, Martin got murdered. Malcolm got murdered. And the people that's doing these murders either look like us or is aided by somebody that look like us. And this goes on. I could go on all day with people who was had the right. Uh, Emmett Till. A lot of people don't know that that whole, that, that whistling at the lady story was made up after the fact. And they don't know that it was some people that looked like us that went to his people house and got him and wasn't no pale faces. They even show it to you in the movie, but they mix them together. But in the original story, it was two older brothers that went and got him and they told his people that we going to give him up before they burn our town down. Right? Mm -hmm. But they was never seen in the custody of the pale face. Right. But when they tell the story after the fact, they have to got to cover to give us a cover story. We don't know who Emmett Till was. He was Chief Littlehorn had he come to realize who he was. And his job was to call that call what they call Whistling Dixie in the South. just a war cry of the natives. It's an old Mississippian cultural phenomenon that if you're not familiar with the Mississippians, you won't never be able to put that piece together. So they threw the lady under the bus. That's why she never went to prison. Right? That's why nothing never happened to her. She was protected by some people that look like us, but they not us. That's who we've been fighting the whole time. We've been fighting some people that look like us, that run this government behind the scenes, and then they tell us it's pale face. It ain't pale face. Pale face don't run nothing. They ain't even figured out a competent story to tell you how some star walk walkers get conquered by cavemen. It don't make sense. It don't make sense unless you had some star walkers help them. Okay, um, I see a brother said, yo, Sai, he's moving all around the place. The only reason is because I'm asking him questions. So when I ask a question, he have to go and he's jumping to answer that question. So you, I got to tune in and, you know, try to free your mind up a little bit. Was the, being that you spoke about, you know, the slave ships and stuff like that, and you can't really find the slave ships, was the transatlantic slaves trade fabricated you would say fabricated 
it was devised in Notre Dame University as an academic plot. It mm -hmm. was only to be taught as a tool of education for the ones who was the victors in the war to control the ones who lost. The war was the Gullah Wars in Florida. When the enemy tell the story, he say a seminal wars. When our ancestors tell us, they say it was the Gullah Wars. This is how you know the difference, mm -hmm. right? The slave narrative was to cover up that we was being held as prisoners of war at our big mama house. They can't call it big mama house, so they called it the big house. Because if they call it big mama house, we gonna figure it out too fast, right? Then they have people that come in as uh, plantation managers with pale faces. All the time, the Negro that was married to Big Mama poisoned her or murdered her some kind of way and brought these pale faces in to look like they run in the plantation. And all the time, they taking orders from the house nigga. He was the run running the plantation because our uh, uh, the way that we did business was not the same as them. Our land is only passed down through the matrilineal line. It's not passed down through the fatherland. Rulership is passed down through the fatherland. That's the difference. The women inherit the land, the men govern it. Right? That was our tribal structure long before Columbus sailed. He wasn't even born, we was doing it, right? They said we had no royalty because our castles was empty. They turned our castles into prisons. We didn't have prisons before they came. We didn't have police before they came. Yeah, we had conflict. And what we do, we knuckle up. My chief gonna tell your, your chief, hey, we're not finna take everybody to war for a difference between my son and your son. Put them out there and let them fight. Be the best man win. But when the enemy came, as you, a good reference is Shaka Zulu. If you remember in this movie Shaka Zulu, because they did the Africans the exact same way they did us. If you go to Shaka Zulu, you'll see that they was fighting mock warfare. And Shaka soldiers... Murdered him on the spot, killed him on the spot. He was like, what is you doing? He said that the enemy that comes do not fight war the way we fight war. And it changed the whole dynamic of the war. But what happened to Shaka? Somebody looked like him, stabbed him in the back. Mm. That's the same story of Chief Pontiac. Somebody did one of his clansmen, or so he thought, Stabbed him in the back, right? So we the, the history still have the same recurring theme, cycles within cycles. It's just keep replaying. The only thing that changes is the face of the characters, but they keep running the same plays because that's their playbook, right? Their playbook is to keep us divided by first, they have to. The four first, they have to. Uh, they have to attack our culture. Dr. John Henry Clark's. You can look it up on TikTok. He said this was a war on our culture. Why would you go to war against a culture and not against the people? We baby kids. We don't die. We multiply. <laughs> the more they try to kill us, the harder we come back. And. They was de being depleted and they didn't know we was. So they was re ready to make an agreement, but we was being depleted on both sides of the war. That's also a prime way because most of the people that's remain living after war is children. And th that's how they get to indoctrinate the child so he don't never know the truth of who he was and where he come from. They raising eagles with chickens trying to convince the eagle he a chicken. What right. what teacher or scholars have been your biggest influence? 
Um, my biggest influence in scholarship, I don't know who the biggest, but I got a lot of them. I got a list of them. That's a good question. Okay. <laughs> I mean, my favorite, my favorite is Garvey. When you truly understanding, then Elijah, then Noble Juali, um, Malachi York, um, Father God, Allah Putin, Clarence Thirteen X, um, right now the one that's really putting out a lot of information that most of us don't know about is the brother out of Florida named Uwata Ashby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, 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 the truth. Um, Dr. Neely Fuller is one of my all time favorites. That one, he don't have to write nothing else. Um, that, that counter measure to fight white supremacy was very impactful and powerful. Now we got another one in part two, which is a, a a word code guy, right? And then um, I'll, uh, Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, um, Shake Anta Diop, um, I already mentioned Ivan Van Sertima, Amos Wilson. Oh, I love that brother. Man, one that, of the elders say Amos Wilson died from Negro neglect. One of my favorites, brother, <laughs> Dr. Amos Wilson, brother. Talking about a thinker? Yes. That's right. Mm. And so, every one of us should have blueprint for black power in their collection. We don't got that. We ain't serious. So let's get so talk to me about. So um what was the real trail of tears? The real trail of tears was the the, the paper genocide of the original people and the matriculation of the foreigners that they brought in as servants to replace us. If you look up Indian school and you zoom in on the faces, those are Asians. They are children, but they Asians. Mm -hmm. And they don't have, I don't got nothing against Asians. We got we got a, a long-standing uh, treaty over here with the Asians. This is why in the South, everybody got a Lee in their name. Somebody, Bobby Lee, Earl Lee, Verdi Lee, Henry Lee, Arthur Lee, all them Lees is an old contract. They keep the name in the family because it's keeping the contract alive. Mm -hmm. The contract traced back to a general in China named General Li, spelled L-I, but it's pronounced Li. Or they commonly call him the Black General. Right? And um, this is the source of the contract with the royal families of Asia. Like I say, we was marrying them on the, on the Pacific seaboard the whole time for thousands of years. So it has, it, there's no, um, it's a no brainer to me that we look different across the land because we marrying Africans on the East, we marrying Asians on the West, right? But in our source, DNA comes out of the Mississippi Delta. It's, it's the old Mississippi clay dirt walking. That's who we are, right? And the Trail of Tears was when they was using the dog's roll to replace us. And they was using the paper to classify people. And this is why everything is contingent on paperwork. And that doesn't even affect the oral traditional people. Because in our oral traditions, we still going to tell our stories and sometimes they're going to be coded. You remember... Uh, Gil Scott hearing the ghetto code, the dot, the dot, the dot, the dash. Mm -hmm. We still talking that. That's Mississippi Delta blues lingo. We don't, we don't remember our culture unless you grow up being revisited all the time. This is why you got to go back and listen to the blues, to the ragtime. You got to go back and listen because they was telling us stuff that was not being put in the books. 
they was putting it on the drum. Because what they put on the drum, they know they can instruct us better than leaning on a system that's based on fraud. Mm -hmm. So we use arts and culture and cultural phenomenon. Hip hop ain't new. It's resurrected from who we were to return us back to who we are. A lot of us don't know that in the early 1900s, they had what's called the spiritualist movement. That was, that was like, yo, I cannot, that was, that was like real, a real, uh, powerful movement of an era. Remember, Noble Drew Ali said, I'm going to make the European tell you the truth. Right. He also said in oral statements and prophecies that I'm going to leave these people in power just long enough for you to learn how to run a government. Right. And then we turn around and after he say that we get flooded with all these pale faces that's putting all of these doctrines across the land. You got Joseph uh, Smith you got uh, Charles Russell and Joseph Rutherford, Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, you got Mary Baker Eddy for Christian Science. You got Madame Blavatsky for Theosophy. Why they all just decide to come when Noble Drew Allen say you're going to make the, pale, the European tell us the truth? Right? So they come in to answer his call. Since we was blocked out of institutions if we couldn't pass the brown paper bag kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, if we don't pass the brown paper bag test, you can't get in the dough. Right? And it was to give favor to pale faces because they was using them as a rough shield or blood shield. People don't know that's what Rothschild mean, blood shield. Whose blood is they shielding? They protecting the blood of the people that came over here and they came back down until something happens with the people that's already here. Right. One of the people that's already here has had to assert the blood and the right in the public domain without fear of consequences, without backing down from the enemy, without caring um, what they think or how they feel about us asserting our jurisdictional supremacy. But it's a process. The process is called the redemption process. The redemption process is to get from under the admiralty jurisdiction of the squatters and settlers and get back under the tribal jurisdiction, the law of the land we call the great law. The system is designed to keep us trapped in this endless cycle of paperwork. So every time we file paperwork, if we write, they don't honor it. But if they write, they are they still going to enforce it. Right. That's what you call inequity in law. None of our people is noticing this because we not proficient in law. We can't sit there with the lawyers and have a conversation and then they try to figure out what law school you went to. It's called Saginaw Correctional Facility. Six years. <laughs> Six years of going back and forth, reading every one of their West Key systems and understanding that this law ain't what they telling us. Their whole system is based on a uniform commercial code. That's why all of the uniforms give the appearance of legitimacy. You know who legitimate? The Bloods is legitimate. The Crips is legitimate. The Vice Lords is legitimate. Remember that clip you was playing at the beginning? Osiris was talking to all the brothers in the street. He was talking to the tribes. Because they don't tell us, and we're not going to never look it up, that the, tri the word gang mean tribe. But they villainize the, the tribes by calling them gangs and giving it a negative connotation to turn the people against us reconstituting the tribes. We're going to always return to who we are because that's who we is in our DNA. They can't take that out of us. It's part of who we are.
All right, all right, my brother. I am, I'm, I'm, I got tired of cutting you off. I want you to get a whole spill out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you are right. No, you are right. I, uh, I do a little burst and then I stop to come here for the next question. Yes, yes, beautiful. So we're moving around, y'all, because this is just organic. We're doing this organically, and um, I just have a few questions for the brother. We're going to open up the floor for everybody that got big mouths that's in there. Make sure you come in and you can ask a question. You know, I know this is probably new to your ears because you used to having the um, the Hebrews and the comedics and y'all used to that. But when you're hearing something new, you know, you, you can't take the information. So let me ask you this, brother. Um, what is the genocide on paper that you speak about regarding Andrew Jackson? So under Andrew Jackson, anybody that was of our phenotype was classified as uh, Negroes. They was classified as other than a native, right? And they went on on the trail of tears with people that wasn't us to replace us with. So while they changing our designation on paper, they leaving us in Georgia, Arkansas, Alabama, and Mississippi on their way up to Oklahoma. Right? They leaving us. We got big mamas down there just taking us in. We didn't know what an orphan is because somebody going to take them in. Right? We don't need to know what homeless was because everybody had somewhere to sleep. Right. So what they changed on paper, it was to make us never realize that we are blood tied to this land in America. The majority of us. The pale face came to get a drop of blood. In the great melting pot. This has always been the land where all of the tribes of the earth congregated. And this is why it's so many different subcultures within our culture, because we had people that's coming from everywhere. We only had one primary rule to practice your doctrines under your own vine and fig tree. If you don't practice it, if somebody bring one of the chiefs a doctrine and it's a good doctrine to him, he can't teach it like they teach it somewhere else. He got to make it his own and teach it his way. That's a tribal standard because this is how we'll always be able to, no matter what doctrine arise on the land, we'll be able to see traces of our culture because we made it our own. This is why nation of Islam, Islam don't look like Sunni Islam or Shia Islam. Because Elijah Muhammad was operating under the tribal doctrine. That's why he told the minister, you can't teach it like I taught it. You got to teach it how you teach it. You, because you got to make it your own. If you're going to be, this is why when Clarence 13, uh, 13X left, he didn't teach the same exact thing that Elijah taught. But he taught it his way and all his sons and daughters of today, the gods and earths, know exactly what they're talking about when they ask you what's today's mathematics. Most of us don't know. Hell, I don't even know that good. <laughs> right, right. Right, because that's not my house. But the respect is given to the chief for the work he did for the redemption of his people. Right? Because some of us tobacco chiefs, I'm a tobacco chief. I smoke. That's cultural. It don't got nothing to do with what uh, big pharma say. It's cultural, right? When you used to, you used to couldn't have a cigarette shop on the land that didn't have a tobacco chief statue in it, right? So you could Google tobacco chief and they gonna pull them up. They in tobacco shops still, and they they definitely not no light skinned Negroes. Make that clear. When you see them, you can't mistake them. You can't even mistake them for a high yellow Negro. They obviously heavily melanated, and many of them had nappy hair. All of us don't got nappy hair. I do. 
right? Then you got chiefs like Big Tookie, Afro chief, right? And a lot of people think that they put him to death when they put him in cryostasis, right? So when a lot of this stuff come out, a lot of people that were saying I was crazy five years ago then seen enough coming in four, five years ago to this day of stuff that I didn't told them. Some of it haven't surfaced yet, but a whole lot of it have. And I ain't no prophet. I'm just reading what's being played out in the public. I'm reading our culture. And our culture tell us that when we make certain steps in this direction, it's the law of cause and effect. Because you did this, the earth has to respond this way. Because you said this in the public domain, the nature has to now perform this function, right? And then you watch the stars as above, so below. The stars is playing out in the human arena. We think we're going about our day-to-day business and we playing out what they call the dance of the celestial stars. They ain't talking about the stars up there. They talking about those certain humans with certain capabilities to bring balance back to Earth. We coming out of entropy. That's why the Masonic Lodge always talking about from chaos, out of chaos comes order. We coming from total entropy, social breakdown. What's the remedy? While it's breaking down, we rebuild it. That's what they say, uh, preparing the table for you in the presence of your enemy. So while we sitting here watching America fall in the background is tribes all over the land that's involved in this. Mm-hmm. Right. And some of them look Asian and some of them look African, but they are native. They all organic and original to over here. Some of them have blood from other places through marriage. But the root stock of the of this land is the old Mississippians, those what we call totem chiefs. Okay. Um, Brother Rod, are you um okay with any of the guests coming in, maybe asking questions or two? Are you all right with that? Yeah, I don't got no problem asking no questions. Hey, I know how to say I don't know when I don't know. There you go. Remember, family, always respect the guest over here. You can ask a question. You ain't got to come in for a debate. You can ask the question, though, and the brother will answer it if he can. If he can't, then he'll simply act, say that. But before I open it, I'll ask him this one question, and then I'll let the brother come in. Are the so-called Hispanics more our people than those who are of the continent of Africa? And if so, please explain why and how. The his or the islands is where a lot of the Hispanics are from going into South America, going into Central America. And these were tribes that was there that was infiltrated by the settlers. And miss they was taught a whole new identity of self. And like we used to send delegations from Louisiana Big Mama to the islands. All of the tribes around would send delegations to Louisiana, right? Before that, we were sending them down in New Mexico where the pyramids is. But those people are an admixture of pale faced Europeans that came for their drop of blood and natives that was already here. Some of them had what we call a high volume of Asian blood from those on the West Coast marrying in and to give a lot of those in what we call modern Mexico a different appearance. But you know what the one drop drop rule is. So when you want to see what the original Mexican looked like, look up Afro-Mexican. Right. You can go to Puerto Rico and see the Puerto Ricans come in the same shade that we do in Chicago and New York in in uh, Alabama and California. How we come in shades, they come in shades. The only difference is the linguistic barrier because of how the French 
the English and the Spanish divide us up in their wars. And this is why we speak different languages. Don't none of us speak the native tongues from the land. The majority of us learn English um, as children and never was able to learn a foreign language or our original language. But in some of our cultures, we still talk what we call the patois or the originals that's merged in the English. They call it the pidgin or the patois. It's because they speak in a combination of either French with a native tongue, Spanish with a native tongue, or English with a native tongue, depending on what lo where they located at. You're on mute, sir. Brother Naeem, a.k.a. Lord Abba, is in the building. Peace and blessings to you, brother. What's up, Lord Abba? Peace, what's going on, Sai? What's going on, man? Um, while you over here playing, man, I think you better be ready for next Friday. I mean, this Friday coming up, brother. Oh, no, I, I was putting my presentation together today. Huh? You got a powerful conversation coming up with uh, Captain Katazai, so you better... You should be in the um the laboratory right now, brother. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been working on my presentation most of the day. You know, it's it's gonna be sad how they <laughs> how Tazaria just threw his little man's out there to get beat okay. up, okay. to get beat up like that. <laughs> it's, it's just gonna be funny, right? It just go with the scholarship funny though. Like no jokes. I'm gonna be dead serious. All scholarship. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be funny. I want to see how you gonna prove that. Ruth was a was an Israelite. I'm I'm curious to see this one. I, I ain't going to lie, but um. Well, we got you here with our brother Ron and uh, Hayes. So, do you have a question or do you want to make a statement? What's up? Yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, brother. Peace, uh, peace. What's going on, brother man? First yeah. question: What's what's the name of your tribe? What tribe I, do you come from? I'm a Mississippian. A Mississippi. So, like, there were many tribes along the Mississippi River which stretch from the mouth of the Gulf Coast all the way up to mm -hmm. which state I can't remember where it terminates at but it, it pretty much splits the Midwest in half so like is is there a specific tribe that you are a part of? I'm an admixture of multiple tribes from the Mississippi in different stocks from my mother's side and my father's side. So rather than tack it down to one individual tribe, when I'm an admixture of several different tribes, is best qualified as just being a Mississippian. Okay, so well, no, I understand that. So can you just name like one of the tribes that's in your line? Yeah, Choctaw, um, Chickasaw, um, Washita, just a, quite a few of them. That's just a couple of them. Okay, so now from what I know about the Choctaw and the Chickasaw, especially when it comes to our people, is that the Choctaw and the Chickasaw enslaved our ancestors. And that's why we have like Choctaw freemen and Chickasaw freemen today. They were emancipated via treaty in 18th, treaty with the United States in 1866. So when you say Choctaw and Chickasaw, do you mean like your ancestors were a part of that tribe or they were descendants of those people that were enslaved and emancipated in 1866? Well, no, my family's, our family closest we ever was to slaves were sharecroppers. Um, all of the tribes um, don't agree with the five civilized tribes making treaty with the settlers. It was over 5,000 tribes across the land and only five civilized, what they call civilized tribes, have treaties. But the first thing we have to realize is that all of us was infiltrated and we still being infiltrated to this day by people who don't want us to reclaim my birthright. Okay, so, uh, and okay, I hear you. So, 
when you when you're saying we, for instance, because I heard you say we several times from the time that I was listening in, right? Like I've been able to trace my ancestry back in this land to the slave labor camps, etc. I can't remember the name of the ship that my uh, oldest ancestor got off of, but I know for a fact that my ancestors were so- sold into slavery after being brought over here from Africa. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious when you're saying we, are you including all of our people or are you speaking about like your people specifically, like the Washita or something like that? Well, when I say we, I'm talking about the ones that's organically American. I'm not talking about the Johnny come lately Native Americans. Or I'm not talking about the patriotic Americans. I'm talking about before America was here, those people who was here, them the we that I'm talking about. Okay, okay, because when you were saying we, it sounded like I was included in the we, so I was I was just kind of confused, man. You know, these are some of the questions that I ask a lot of people. So I, this is the last question, and I'll and I'll get up off of here. Uh, do can you tell us the name of like the name of my oldest ancestor that I've been able to trace back through the through my bloodline and the slave labor camps of South Carolina? is Aaron Way, right? Um, you know, before that, it's, it gets a little murky. So were you able to trace back the name of one specific ancestor? Because if you are indigenous to this land, then that means you are a part of a tradition. I bought a bank. Let's go see two, three, and four ancestor because if you are indigenous to this land then that means you are a part of a tradition that is you know a genealogical tradition that's usually passed along orally right it's, you know you know who your great 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 grandfather was chief so and so of the such and such tribe were, were you ever able to trace that ancestor back and what was that ancestor's name um i don't I don't focus on tracing my ancestry back. I'm more focused on talking to the earth as to where I belong on the earth and my mission on the earth. Um, but I do have, um, I can tell you that my, my, my mother's father was a chief who held a sizable portion of land in Mississippi that became Macomb, Mississippi, Magnolia, Mississippi, Tylertown, Mississippi, and a couple more little towns, uh, Sunflower. All of that was built on ancestral lands that belonged to our family for generations back. So, right. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I didn't really get into the genealogy a lot because I didn't trust a lot of the records because a lot of the, like for instance, where my grandfather's uh, court records was for his property, they burnt the courthouse down when, our, when my auntie them was trying to file a lawsuit. They burned the, the courthouse down to get rid of the documents. So a lot of Whoa. stuff got lost in that in that manner. Whoa, but wait, hold on, brother. Wow, that's crazy. So you saying to conceal the true documents of y'all's native ancestry, they burnt the courthouse down? It was for the land grab more than to conceal who we were. Oh, okay, okay, I got it was, you. It was to get rid of the records uh, of I the land you. holdings. Mm -hmm. So, right. all right, now this is my definitely my last question. <laughs> how did like how do you know that you are like indigenous like because you, if you can't trace your ancestry back and you've not done any of the genealogical research to whereas you can pinpoint like a single ancestor how do you know that you are indigenous and you are from this land and your people are not from africa and you've been here from day one how, how do you know that um i have been blessed with having genetic memory to actually have memories of past lives walking the Delta. I remember riding horses in, in the South long before 
you know, I got multiple past life memories that I can go by that'll tell me information um, that I don't have access to through academic means. Okay, definitely. All right, man. Definitely. Um, Sai, I see you Friday, brother. Um, Sai, you, 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 a, you a good brother, Sai. You, <laughs> you a good brother. I want to give you your props for letting people come through and share their views and their opinions, which do not necessarily reflect the house of consciousness. You's a good dude, man. You's yes, a good sir. dude. All right, peace, man. I'll see you Friday, Sai. Peace. Yes, sir. All right, we got the next runner up. What's up, Mass Man with the mask on? What's happening? You got a question? What's good? What's good? Yeah, What's we were had a run in a few times. Uh, I was requested you to come on Alquan's channel last year. Who, who are you talking yeah. to? You, brother. We met oh, okay. before. Okay, you got your mic is a little choppy. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. But do you have a question for the brother? Yes, sir. So, um, uh, I would first. I would have to ask you: Could we have a, a debate um, for a separate topic? And second, um, how can you figure out that you are indigenous to this landmass if uh, you don't have the records? Because you can't just say that you have genetic memory. You also have to have like a specific ethnic ethnic group. You have to um, know where your family came from. And you also have to do the genealogical research. And with my perspective, I've done the genealogical research. And yes, I can back up what, what you're saying about the, um, the Thomas Jessup that burned down the court records within South Carolina. Do you come from that area? No, man was in Mississippi. They was doing it all over the land, though. So it was a common practice. Mm hmm well, with my own family, I've traced my lineage all the way back to the 1600s, and I have the surnames of the Indians that were in the land during that time period. And a lot of people don't understand is everybody didn't sign up with the five civilized tribes thing. I agree. Most people stayed in the areas for which they were already at. Half the so-called African-American population were free before 1865. It's on the census. You had a lot of free Negroes that owned other Negroes. Brother, ask a question. This is fact. Ask your so question. My question is for you. Why is there uh, an attack against American Indian paradigm with all these ideologies such as Pan-Africanism or Moors and Hebrew Israelites trying to get in on the American Indian paradigm? Because there, there is an admixture of us who subconsciously they know who they are, but they in these foreign doctrines to the land. And they want to still assert who they are, but they want to hold on to the foreign doctrine as well. Mm -hmm. Right? So a lot of these doctrines wasn't here before Columbus came. Most of them weren't. All right. Gotcha. All right. Brother. Well, I'll leave about it here, uh, Sai. When you want to set up a debate on Alquan Hardcore channel. All right, brother. Put your number in the private chat so I can reach out to you. Oh, I have. You have my um, email before. Right. You and, um, what's his name, Bobby Banger. Um, okay. All right, brother. Let me get to the next question. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you coming in. All right. Um, before we go to the next question with the brother, I have to ask you because with the brother, I have to ask you because right here, I need to know a little more of this, man. Um, it's a two part question. The first one is what is the Anunnaki and are they exclusively in America? Two part question. What is the Anunnaki? And are they exclusively here in America? So the second part first, they're not exclusively here in America. The Anunnaki is a group of beings spoke of in the Sumerian tablets as uh, bringing certain technological advancements to Earth from a 
another star system. They currently have an elliptical orbit, a 3,600 year elliptical orbit around the Earth. Their planet is called Nibiru. And they called Anunnaki because the term Anunnaki is in reference to Anu sending a contingent to Earth, which was called Kai at the time. So they Anu sent to Earth is what Anunnaki translated to, right? In Egypt, it's Ani sent to Earth, but they don't call them uh, Anunnaki in the hieroglyphics. They call them the Netaru, mm -hmm. right? And in, in um, Hebrew, they call Elohim, but they all trace back to the old Sumer doctrine um, except for the Egyptians traced back to Tehuti, which traced back to the Americas. All right. All right, let me bring in my man Saints in the building. What's going on, Saints? Hey, Shalom. What up, Saul? Just chilling with the family right now. Yeah. How y'all brothers doing? <laughs> Peace. <God. Peace. laughs> hey, I have a question for you, beloved. Yes, sir. Um, is America older than Africa? Like, is this really the motherland? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Mm. Wow. The pyramids here is older than the ones in Africa. The ancient constructions is older than the ones in Africa. And there's also people over here that they found older than people they found in Africa. Okay, okay, I'm learning. I just, you know, wanted to come in with a sincere question, uh, subdue my own understanding and try to learn something new. I have one more question, uh, brother. So is is Mississippi, uh, is that originally the land of Israel? Like is the real Egypt and, and Israel really here on, on this continent? That's biblical doctrine, and I don't ascribe to Israel being anywhere on earth. Because oh. if Israel was a place on earth, they wouldn't have had the strong arm, the people in the Middle East to establish it. So, and they got promising them a land and they nomad. So that means they're not native nowhere. So if they was native to earth, they God, Yahweh, Enlil, would not have to promise them that he going to get rid of some people, genocide, in order to restore them into a uh, homeland. None of that biblical Torah, Quranic information, that don't move me at all. One more question, beloved, and thank you so much uh, for answering my questions. I just got one more, son, and then I'm, I'm done. Um, is Atlantis or are the Atlanteans real people? The Atlanteans is the original people of this land. This was Atlantis. They stretched out into the Atlantic Ocean where you have Bimini Road that led to the city that sunk. That was in warfare. Oh, gratitude. Oh, man, I appreciate you answering my questions, brother. Uh, peace to Sarnetta. Shalom, family. I'm off the panel. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. sir. All right, brother Ron Hayes. Um, wow, you are blowing some minds here. But I'm quite sure this is nothing new. We heard this before. We heard it with the Moors. We heard it with the um those who claim to be Indian and call themselves Indians. And um, let me ask you: Is the United States of America a corporation? And if so, tell us about it. Yeah, it was incorporated um under the secondary constitution right and it's been a corporation the whole time they re they did a reenactment of it during the uh the gulf war in 2000 when they put muhammad karzai in office all you got to do is take his name and put george watch your name that's the same way they set up the government mm -hmm. so is america under contract with great britain they were an extension to great britain the three city state empire start with the vatican at the top then it goes to england which is the financial district so it went from spiritual district which is actually religious not spiritual 
to financial, which was Buckingham Palace's interest, and then military was the city-state set up in D.C. to occupy this territory. We living in an occupied territory. Okay. There y'all have it. Um, You speak about the contract ties into the Bible. Is the Bible a powerful tool that we can use? It is. The Bible is one of the coldest books ever written because in there you have the art of war, the art of romance, the art of deception, oh, yeah. the art of fraud. All of that is in the book. Treachery, deceit, mm. immorality being played out by the major characters. Um, it's all in there. So it got so many paradigms and it's also encoded with stellar alignments told in the, in a fairy tale fashion, what we call conceptual physics formulas. Mm. We have a, I teach that we have a um, higher self and a lower self, good, bad, good, evil. Some people say evil and good don't exist. That's the number one food that kills testosterone and metabolism. This is a metabolism killer. This is a metabolism killer. And even this is a metabolism killer. The sad reality is most people eat these foods every single day and wonder why they can't lose weight. If you want to look better and feel younger and have more energy, stop eating this food right here. Which one of these foods makes it way harder for you to stay lean, build muscle, and just perform at your best? Is it eggs, steak, coffee, or flavored yogurt? And I know all those foods sound healthy, but the truth is one of them is completely destroying manhood. And I'll tell you which one it is in just a few minutes, plus three more testosterone killing foods that are probably in your kitchen right now. You should know that there are actually foods out there that raise estrogen levels in men. They're probably in your diet right now. They're very common foods, and the more you eat them, the more your estrogen levels are gonna go up, which means your testosterone is going down. I knew where I wanted to go. I just, I didn't know how to get there. If I can get to where I wanna go faster, sign me up, let's do it. And it was a great decision. I don't wanna sound cocky, but watching my body turn into a Ferrari, basically. You know, it was Hell yeah, fun. hell you yeah. Know? Just watching my body shrink and muscles are starting to develop, and you can see it, I just feel unstoppable. So one of my buddies texted me the other day and he was asking for some help with getting in shape. And he said that his energy's way down. He's not losing any weight. His libido and his stamina are way down. So I said I'd help him. And I was like, all right, send me over what you're eating. There was one food that stuck out to me that he was eating. And I call it this food, the masked man killer, because it's hidden as a healthy food, but it's horrible for guys because this one food makes it impossible to put on muscle or lose weight or have energy or all of that. So I made a free presentation that tells you what this food is, why to stop eating it, and a 30 second morning routine that you can start doing to boost this hormone and make getting in shape easy. So click the learn more button below to check it out before you miss out. I recommend this to a lot of my friends. Really just give it a shot. You're going to love it. I mean, it worked for me. It's working for thousands of people. So if the proof is in the pudding, look at the results. I mean, what do you got to lose? In just two weeks, I lost 36 pounds. I have more energy, better mood. I feel attractive again. And you can do it too. Just keep watching. $69 Special Forces device turns men into beasts. It emulates over 50,000 crunches in 15 minutes, burning calories and melting fat up to 10 times faster than regular exercise. And because it was made specifically for the Special Forces to turbocharge their strength and fitness, it's far more effective than gym and more potent at burning belly fat than any fad diet or workout program. It's so powerful that people are melting away pound after pound of stubborn belly fat on autopilot in just seven days. It was created for the military by Captain James Snipes, a 31-year-old Army officer and a bioengineer. After getting seriously injured in a dangerous mission in the Middle East, he spent three months in a hospital. When he finally recovered, he realized his body has gotten weak and he wouldn't have enough time to get back in shape for the next critical mission. That's when James remembered what he learned in the Army about using electric muscle stimulation and had a desperate idea. Using the EIMD phenomenon that powers all the muscle tissue growth in a human's body, he built a revolutionary device that ignites rapid fat loss and explosive muscle gain. Having only three weeks left for the mission, he started using the device for 20 minutes per day to improve his core, arms, and legs muscles. And the results were incredible. That's, it depends on what, you know what I'm saying? What might be 
bad for us can be good for someone else. Think about that. So the word good and evil, sometimes they say don't really exist. But to keep it in perspective of where we at here in America, um, I teach that God, according to the story in the Bible, is God and the devil. He does good and evil. He does bad and good. Isaiah 45, 7. Okay. All right. I know what you said. Where he create good and evil. I, the Lord God, does all these things. So to you, um, am, I mo am I a little closer to the truth in teaching our people that God is good and he also have a demonic side as well? When we talk about the devil in the Bible, you're talking about God and the devil because we have a higher self and also a lower self. So when you see the word devil, devil mean adversary, opponent. Right. Right. When you see God, God is a alternate for Gad, which is the tribe of Israel. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just the uh, in the Grimm's Law grammar, all vowels are interchangeable during translation and transliteration. Gad means a troop. It's a military position. So when we telling it in the terms of the English language, we really saying that if two people at war, one called himself God and his opponent is called the devil by him. But when you look at the events of actions, they fall at the spectrum of positive and negative, which is degrees of the same thing, right? When you had a worse degree, you got pure negative. And when you got the best degree, you got pure positive. Otherwise, you're somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right. And most of us are somewhere in the middle. We just fall closer to negative expressions of the self sometimes than we do positive expressions of the self. Right. So I hear I was hearing brothers always saying we got, we got, we got. I say, okay, I just got a couple questions. If we gods, what do guys do that people don't do? What do guys do that the king can't do? What do God do that the president can't do? If we God, right? So if we gods, we should be able to do something different than the status quo, than the run of the mill every day, humdrum, go to work, pay your bills. What do the gods do? And nobody can tell me the difference in a sensible fashion. They all got to pull out a book, the religious books. Right. And those was given to us by our conquerors in order to keep us conquered. I don't got no problem with using the the because uh, you can get some good teachings out of Proverbs and Ecclesiastics. Um, but I don't I don't send people to the Bible if I can help it. But sometimes it'd be necessary because of the understanding and a paradigm is first rooted in biblical information. So then you have to go inside the Bible and try to do it like they do with Big Pharma when they create a vaccine, when they core out the nucleus of the virus in order for the virus to be able to elicit an immune response. You go into the Bible to show them what's in there because most people, 90% of the Christians, 95% of them probably never read the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. Right? You got more Muslims that read the whole Bible than you do Christians just so they can prove that the Christians is wrong. That's like, right? that's, that's me, but I'm not a Muslim. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> I'm not a Muslim. I see I got my uh, my little brother in the back, Brother Reggie. Brother Reggie, um, you could come in and ask a question, brother. Um, there you go. There go my brother Reggie. Brother Reggie is in the building. Great. How you doing? Brother, Peace, brother. I'm good. Brother Rod Hayes, how are yes. you? Um, just uh, so I have to do some uh, a little bit research on your work. Uh, what's the name of your book? I haven't written any books, but I got um, a lot of information on the Young Elders channel on YouTube. Um, um, I got a few videos on Brother Rich channel. Um, and I got a whole lot of stuff on Instagram and Facebook. But a lot of my Instagram and Facebook people have also
put up on YouTube. Great. All right. Um, your mentors? Who are your mentors? One my main one. mentors is my parents. Your main mentors is your uh, parents. Okay, that's great. Grandparents or great grandparents or just your parents? My parents. Okay. Your and your uh, grandparents are from where? We might my, be we might be cousins. Okay, so my grandfather, um, my grandparents on my mother's side is from Sunflower, Mississippi. My grandparents on my father's side is from Canton, Mississippi. Okay, so you're a Mississippi uh, person. And you, and so certainly from what I've heard, uh, unfortunately I had to take a uh, personal phone call, is that uh, we were always here and that uh, the uh, slave trade is written by uh, the Europeans, roughly, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, what, what, what source helps me uh, with what you're saying? What, what, what source helps me with what you're saying? Um, the basic analysis of the slave ship narrative that they gave us is the first, first spoiler alert. OK. Right? Okay. Because and we, the first narrative they gave us of the slave ships is we was packed like sardines, feet to head, right, mm -hmm. in the hull of the ship. Okay. Okay. The, the gas chamber in three days, nobody's going to make that journey. It's too many people that's not seafaring throwing up. Hey. It's too many people that got diarrhea. It's too many people that's pissing. The urine alone to turn it into an ammonia uh, field chamber, mm -hmm. right? That's not even to mention that when the feces start to fester after two or three days, it starts to put off E. coli, mm -hmm. right? And that also the vomit with the stomach acids begin to putrefy and also let off methane gases. So nobody could have survived that journey that the narrative that they tell us. Now, okay. and, well, yeah. Uh, no, and one, I, one more I, thing. I, one more thing. Yeah. The irony to that is, if you do an overlay with the Cathedral of Notre Dame University, with the same slave ship image they've been showing our people for two hundred years, it's an exact blueprint of the building. Okay. Have you? Um. So you uh you've been to uh West Africa. I don't know. I don't want to go to Africa. I don't have no. There's nothing over there that I need to do. Everything so, I need to do is here. So you never seen the uh, slate forts and dungeons in the, on the, um, the more than 40 uh, or any of them on the slate? Because you do know there are about 40 uh, uh, forts and dungeons along the coast of Africa. You do know that, right? That's what they call them. Well, I've been there. I know. I, the buildings are there. I know the buildings you speak of, and I know yeah. what they call them. I just don't agree with the narrative they gave oh, us. Okay, I I happen to, I I have I happen to been to four of them, right? Elmina Castle, Cape Cod Castle, El, uh, Fort Abanzi, and then I went to the castles in Gore. So I I just collapsed the Gore into one castle, but there are uh, roughly about um, about seven or eight of them uh, that we that we passed through. So. Um, the way that you are making a narrative about the slave ships, well, there's a reason for all of these forts and dungeons and the way that they are made up, right, to house all of these people on the continent of Africa. Well, there's a reason for all of these forts and dungeons and the way that they are made up, right, to house all of these people on the continent of Africa, right? And uh, so the whole structure of these fortune dungeons is for transporting people, for holding people, um, and then ultimately for transportation to the larger ships. So I've seen that with my I've seen that with my own eyes. Um, so your 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 mentors are your parents, and uh, you know your grandparents, and you know from the earth that you came from and so i is it fairly to say and i'll get off because i know that other people want to talk to you good brother is that this is uh from your personal research 
Yes. Your personal the, the thing that I have with the, the, the slave narrative and the mm -hmm. structures, everything has been monetized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Everything has been monetized. We do have a record of them taking a sizable portion of people from America to set up Liberia. That's that's recorded. But the conditions weren't the same. Okay. That's that okay, that is at a different time period. But we do have records of European ships taking Africans and delivering to Americas. We have the ledgers, we have the slave uh, nope. uh voyages, right? We have yeah. those things. So and then my teachers and my my uh, eldest teacher was Dr. John Henry Clark. And love my, Dr. John Henry Clark. Huh? Say what? I say, I love Dr. John Henry Clark. Yeah, and he took me to Africa in 1980s, uh, in 1986. He took, that's where I learned about the slave forts and dungeons. And these groups of people like Dr. Clark, uh, uh, they were under studies of, of, of people like Arturo Schomburg and Leo Hansberry and, and, um, several others, and all of these groups that I'm talking about, they have been out of slavery because they was born in roughly 1900s, right? 1910, 1920, 1918. Uh, I'll say about 70 years prior to that, uh, we were just coming out of enslavement. So the story that they tell us, uh, that they show us, and that's how the Schomburg Center is created, is by the actual artifacts that was uh, collected. And so I just have to follow you a little bit more. Um, you know, you're a guest on Sarnetta's studios. Oh, you, you fine, brother. You ain't saying nothing that I would be offended by. I kind of like enjoy the conversation. Like, because one of the things I have with the slave narrative is I knew we was at war. And mm -hmm. I knew that history is a lie that's agreed upon. And I also know Dr. Clark said out of his own mouth that a thing doesn't have to be true to have a piece of truth in it. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we look in at the buildings in Western Africa, mm -hmm. that's not what, you know, what's being done over here. Mm -hmm. What's being done over here is called cultural disassociation from that a birth part rate. That, right. that part I so agree with. Right. As right. long as we don't know where we're from, we can't reclaim what's rightfully ours. I don't have a problem with Africans and African people. I tell people this all the time because they got done exactly the same way we got done. When they divided America up into 50 states, they divided uh, Africa up into 50 some states as well under the Berlin conference. Okay. Right. So I don't, I'm, my gripe is not with Africans. My gripe is with European historical writers who mm -hmm. was pushing a narrative for a future generation to fail miserably in reclaiming the birthright. Mm -hmm. If you look around the world, you'll see pretty much the same thing going on everywhere that the organic tribes to the area, They they standing up for their birthright. They they moving to re reclaim the land that settlers had took with colonization and um, discovery rights of the Pope. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, Stop. And um, discovery rights of the Pope. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So uh, my problem. I don't have no problem with Africans. I'm just not from Africa. I'm, Okay. Well, um, I, I, I think it's fair to say that that is uh, your thinking, uh, your, uh, um, your opinion, and um, I have to respect you as a, a person. Uh, the next time you come on, the next time, I'd like to see some sources <laughs> the next time that you come on, but I'm not going to uh, spend too much uh, uh, of the other people's time but you know this short this show is yeah this was short this was short notice i i got told sarnetta i was like if i was going to do a presentation it'd take me a little time to get 
you know, all of the documents that I need to gather. So when you reveal your sources, so I'm, uh, you know, look, I just had a birthday. Uh, <laughs> Happy birthday, I'm, brother. Thank you so much. And I'm on my good side. And I, I have not met you uh, before um, enough to, because I, I punish people. I really punish people for <laughs> their lack of, uh, but I'm not going to punish you uh, tonight. <laughs> Really <laughs> but that's what I do. And so uh, maybe the next time we meet, we can examine some of your sources. Because I, I listen, um, and people can say that there were people of African descent in the Americas before Columbus. They How were. They got there and where they got there, right, seems to be more from Oceania than directly from uh, Africa. And that's the, the latest thinking. Dr. Ali Muhammad would uh, bring that out, but he did not do well against Brother Jabari on that. But okay. they're not they're not directly Africans. They're admixed uh, human beings from Africa that retain some of their phenotypes, but they're and they find themselves largely in South America, and then they move up uh, to the Americas. But we, we can talk about that, but it's not enough of them to say, because there's another group that cross across the Bering Strait. Those are the Asiatics, and there's way more of them. And that's what the so-called American Indian looks like, right? Uh, more of those groups of people, the red man, not the black man. But uh, when you bring some sources, we, we'll be able to triage that. And so with that said, um, uh, audience family, this is our guest. Uh, we're first meeting him. He's a cool dude. He's not um, dogmatic. And, and uh, even though I disagree with some of his points, I'm not going to, uh, I just want to hear out what he has to say, and then we're going to see <laughs> some <laughs> sources. So with that said, uh, pleasure meeting you, right? Um, <laughs> Next time we meet. You sound like somebody I let to sit in the room with for a long time, having a long conversation. Not <laughs> most people. Not most people, Brother Rod. No, not I, most people. Not the well, Hebrews. Some say not, I'm a glutton not, for punishment. Not, not those groups of people. Not, no, no. But um, just because I'm a little light don't mean um, that I'm not bright. <laughs> so, 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 uh Okay, we we are, bring them on again, right? And you do know how to do PowerPoints, right, Brother Rod Hayes? I do, but I haven't done one in a while, but I know how to do them. Okay. Learn to their work. The next time you come. I yeah, see, Rod, I is, like the, to Rod is the truth, as I'm seeing right now. So, yes. Uh, say what, sir? No, I, I said Rod is the truth. He he got his stuff down pack. He knows his stuff. Mm, we would just want to see the, um. it's like the Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews and so does Abraham and Jacob and I mean Isaac and you just indigenous to this land, Reggie. You just don't uh -huh. know it yet, brother. Who? You? Who? You? Um uh no. Uh, you just people. don't know it yet, brother. You just been taught about Africa all your life, you know? Uh -huh, by the grace. So <laughs> so you wanna you so you want so now on record, you wanna say that Dr. John Henry Clark was a damn liar. On record. I would never say that. Hell no. Okay, great. Hell so, no. Uh, yeah. Well, Dr. You, know, you know, I took my DNA record, or my DNA ready. Yeah. You see? And um, it came back um, part native. What you say to that? Of course, because the Africans who were bought, you, your fam, part of your, part of your family, right? The yeah. Puerto Rican side is from the Caribbean. Your mother's side is from where? Africa. Uh huh. So you have a kind of dual um, connection, right? Because that's just how the uh, process worked. Mm -hmm. But your your mother's side is uh, from from Africa. So well, you're, let me you're let not... me correct it. When I say from Africa, I'm talking about African American, not an indigenous African, uh, African a diaspora. African American. Yeah, but how did they become yeah. diaspora? Not through not through the slave ship. Well, you, you know, well, you know, Reggie. Um, 
listening to the Moors and the, um, those who call themselves Indians and stuff, yeah, now I got to really look at the history now because okay. we say we from Africa, and then you have a whole group of us saying we have always been here. So you know, oh, look at you, look at you talking to me like that. Well, um, <laughs> Sanetta, <laughs> yeah, right. um, the Schomburg, the Schomburg Center, like a Toro Schomburg, is like part of your family. He is an African from Puerto Rico, right? Right. And he created the largest, uh, most important research of uh, uh, center for African Americans, and it's right down in your neighborhood. It's a maybe mm -hmm. about. Eight blocks from where you live. How many times no, have you been? No, here? It's not eight blocks, brother. Okay, five blocks. Yes, five blocks. Yeah, I, I was just being nice well, to anyway, you. Anyway, Reggie, I'll talk to you later. How many times have you been to the Schomburg side? I've been to the Schomburg like four times. In your whole life. In my whole life. And it's five blocks away from you. Five blocks away from me. We're gonna go to the Schomburg. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Peace. I almost, Reggie, I almost had a, um, a debate there in the auditorium. I almost yes. made it Langston there like Hughes. that. The yeah. Langston Hughes. Hi. My I almost yes. made it Langston there like Hughes. that. The yeah. Langston Hughes Auditorium. Well, yes. I worked at the Schomburg for five years. Mm -hmm. you know I know. That, right? you know. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get you to the Schomburg and maybe we're going to um go to um the uh rare books and manuscripts and we are going to uh pull one of maybe the commandment keepers um file any of those particular files that are there at the schomburg and we'll go over it or we go to dr john henry clark's collection that's there and maybe we, you can look at it with your own eyes all right, all right. well with that said rahez um peace sarnetta peace to the audience we're going to talk to Rod Hayes again, but he's friendly. Uh, I don't agree with him, but he's friendly. Uh, um, peace, y'all. <laughs> peace, brother Reggie. All right, uh, my brother Ron Hayes, um, this is one of our best scholars in our community. Our brother, we call him Brother Reggie. I call Before him. You, we, oh, I thought okay. he was going to bring somebody else up. Oh, no, no, but no. Look, okay. I don't mind people disagreeing with me. If we all if we all agreed all the time, we wouldn't make no progress. Well, let me say this to you, brother Ron. Over here, it's hard. You see the name on the bus? It's called the toughest environment to be in. And so, <laughs> when I get new people, I don't like running them away. I try to, you know, get their information out to the people because sometimes people come one time and they see how rough it is, and people challenges the information. Next thing you know, they don't come back. So I try to like keep it calm. Let the brother build. Let the brother get his information out. So I don't know how tough your skin is, you know. So this is the first time <laughs> here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So hey, the brother, the brother had a good vibe. I like this vibe. I feel like he's somebody we can talk to. But um, it, it is the story of the slave. The, we don't have a slave ship. But we got all these other ships from the contemporary period is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They have these other ships. If you go to a museum to see a slave ship, it'll tell you clear as day it's a replica. Mm -hmm. Right? They don't have a real slave ship. This is my problem. And they telling us we came on ships, but they don't have one ship. Okay. All right, brother. Um you called the U.S. government a voodoo cult. Yes. Can you please elaborate for us? What do you mean by that? A voodoo cult. So what you see playing out in the public as the Biden administration is a cover story mm -hmm. for a military operation to get the voodoo cult out. The voodoo cult or the sorcerer's cult is what Trump called the deep state. They use three types of magic. They use Babylonian blood magic, Babylonian money magic, and Babylonian sex magic to subjugate the people. And anybody that study sorcery and magic know that the most powerful magic is blood magic. Second most powerful magic is sex magic. 
And when you attach them to money magic, this is this all they doing. They just running the conjure on us. And the conjure is a kind game the whole time. They they literally drink blood and rituals and eat human flesh and rituals to keep the nation under their control. But when we come out of Pisces going into Aquarius, which we had now, all that stuff had to stop. Because everything that they was doing in secret now got to come out in the open. That's why they say the age of Aquarius where the truth is more disturbing than a lie. Right? Because what they doing in secret is what the people don't know. And what they doing in secret also entailed them writing our history for us. We didn't write our history. That's what a lot of us ain't even grasping. Even when we go back to source the the scholars' information, they still dip in the information from people that wasn't from over here. Mm-hmm. Right? But if you want to get the real, you have to go talk to the Gullah Geechee in the Carolina, I mean in uh yeah, in the Carolinas and in Florida. You know, you had to go talk to those other tribes that haven't been assimilated because it's a lot of them that's still not assimilated, but they move on the land you couldn't tell. Right? And like I said, all these gangs, this is just us reconstituting ancient tribes from genetic memory. And this is what the whole COINTEL pro operation was about. They don't want no chief talking to the people, reaching the other chiefs across the land for fear that they might do something about it. Yeah, man, um, that's powerful, brother, right there. Is there anything that you would like to get across that I didn't ask you. I know there's a lot of stuff out there I haven't asked you that you may feel is important that the people know. You know. Yeah. Okay. Whether right. Okay. So the most important thing right now, whether they agree with me or don't agree with me, don't even matter. Right. What matter right now is these tribes is reclaiming the Americas, and America is over with. It's just a matter of getting the message out to the masses about what's going on on the land. Right? A lot of stuff I don't I don't address or deal with because a lot of the work is done now. And what we about to see coming up in short order is the return of the ancient ones and the restoration of the tribes in the tribal structure, which is the great law. It's coming. It's imminent. It could here's the big secret. It's coming. It's imminent. It could any day now, all of the scab is gonna be snatched off this old fallen system for you, for the people to see what's going on. Right? So the the banks is about to be done. That's the last straw is the banks and when they crash the internet. Everybody know what's coming. It's not a secret. All right, brother. Um, let me let me ask you this here. Um, what or who would you say is the god of this planet, and who would you say our people are right here? You would just say we're what natives. What about the Hebrews? What about the Moors? Because they go by that. We have a nationality, which is called Israelites. Then the Moors will say we are Moors. We are the most confused people on the planet. And this is why we are so confused today, because everybody is telling us who we are. People say we are the natives. We are the Moors. We are the Hebrews. Where's the truth coming from? Who are we? I always say that I'm organic to the land, Mississippi, Claire Walker. Mm-hmm. But you you can't you can't say for somebody else who they should identify as. Okay. They have to identify themselves for themselves. Yeah, but why is it like that for us? 
and like everybody it was else. our culture it was a war on our culture and our identity was 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 part of that war right i agree but um it was a it was a war on china they all know who they are. It was a war on the Japanese. It was a war on on the what they call the the Israelites, the Hebrews, you know, the Jewish people. But they all know who they are. Now Why? watch this. We are the most confused people on the planet, though we say we are the mothers and fathers and the first man to build civilization. How come we know that? We could go all the way back and tell you our history. But when it comes to our identity, there is a big identity crisis amongst us. Why is that, brother? That's because we identify with other people with identity crisis. Okay. All right. You, you have you have all of these newcomers, right? All we got to do is start at 1491. That's a year before Columbus came. Right. And then say, was we calling ourselves that in 1491? Because a lot of people like to bring up the biblically named cities. And all the biblically named cities was chartered after 1491. Well, none of them chartered before that. So it, they was chartered after the Bible came over here with the settlers' priests. That's part of the warfare. The whole thing, the, the Japanese ain't calling themselves who they were because they didn't name themselves Japanese. Mm. The Chinese don't call themselves Chinese in China. So we still calling them exonyms. Those are names that foreigners gave them. Right? If you go to Africa, they don't call themselves Africans. I agree. They call themselves by their tribe. And yep. if you're a foreigner, they'll tell you what country they live in. Yeah. That's true. But when you go over there, when you talk to people from over there, they identify a tribal designation. That was erased from us through genocide. This is why our identity, to nail down our identity is such a difficulty, is because a lot of our records we don't have access to right now. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Peace, peace. This has been a great interview, Sa, and peace to Thank Rod you. Hayes again. Oh, yeah, it's been great listening to you tonight. I do have a question. It's a two-part question, though. I want to say in the first part, when people are going back and forth and saying this part of the world is the old world, this part of the world is the new world, is it in reverse or is it that there is no old world and new world? Um there was ancient civ civilizations all over the world. Good question. Good that's, question. That's, that's, and not only is it a good question, that's the most accurate depiction of what we're dealing with paradigm-wise because we talk about the old world and the new world, but America, the whole planet, go through cycles of civilizations that arise and decline. And what she's asking is more accurate as a statement than just a question because 300 years ago we had stuff that was more advanced than now but now we also have stuff that was more advanced than we were 300 years ago so we didn't fall behind but we didn't make progress we just advanced something different at a different period in time so um I would just turn that question into a statement. Okay. See? I see. Mm -hmm. Go on, Rod. Sorry. Yeah. So the, the question was, is there really an old world and a new world? The world is always changing. We've been here. We eternal beings. We really playing the game of the gods. And in the game of the gods, we go into amnesia and try to find ourselves through clues throughout uh, existence. Sometimes the clues is on the ground, sometimes they in the sky, sometimes they in the air. But when we play these games, we deconstruct and reconstruct the whole planet in cycles. That's what we do. Wow. Yeah, that's so true. And that brings me to the Mayans. You know, they always say there's this ancient connection of the Mayans with 
uh, present day Hindustan or India, what we call India today, or we see just different parts of their cosmology all across the world. Does that show that the Mayans are older than we think they are? Or how did we develop um, this cosmology and these beliefs that we can see in so many other places as well? Most of the cosmologies is- You and I have been helping the bad guys for decades. Most of the cosmologies is cultural um, specific because you're teaching the people with a different language and different cultural practice a creation story in your cosmology. And this is why the Dogon cosmology is the holy drama, but it's different than the holy drama that's in the Egyptian cosmology in certain aspects. But it's still the holy drama. The holy drama is the uh, blueprint for the rise of the heir to the throne to ascend to prominence and power. Right. But we thinking that it's just a creation myth alone, but it's telling us as above, so below play out the creation myth on the ground. And the holy drama and the holy drama is the lawsuit. <laughs> yes. I, like, I like Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely be going in. We have Brother Reggie come on our platform on Unscramble Minds all the time, and he is the exact same way. Peace, Brother Reggie. But yeah, that's what I really wanted to ask, especially when we're seeing the connection as far as amongst um, the indigenous here and the indigenous in Africa. So my final question is, is there a way to combine that? Is there a pan indigenous that we should be really going for, especially when we see a lot of their movements coming now is to claim their land and push out the foreigner and say, this is our land. And it does seem as if a lot of them uh, push for us to do the same thing. Is that the movement that we should be on as far as, you know, um, claiming, reclaiming our land as the indigenous people? It's actually a global movement. We just not paying attention to global events because the media only tell us certain stuff. They, the media is there to control the paradigm in order to socially direct the people to where they want them to go. So, um, it is a global movement there in most of the cultures around the planet was all matriarchal. And they were all usurped by patriarchs. Come on, Dulcinea, talk to him. No, he answered my questions. Thank you so much, you guys. You guys have a good night. This is awesome again. Thank you, Sonetta. I know a lot of people are going off in the chat, whether they believe it or not, but I thought this was really good and we learned a lot. No, I think this was great. I believe it was great. As you can see, Brother Ron, um, mm. please ask if he's a Trump supporter. I have a theory. I, I don't support no politicians, period. Why not? Because that don't got nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. The whole political arena is a is a Europe playing out a control story over the people over here. I don't support politics. The politics is dirty. Okay. I agree. I agree. But do you but do you agree? What city are you in right now, brother? I'm in um uh, I'm in Pontiac, Michigan. But do you agree that we need to take control of our pol political game within our own cities? Yeah, I believe in local government taking control first before you can ever take control of a national government because of the structure and the layout of the people. If it ain't a grassroots movement, it ain't for us. <laughs> you got to start with us in our communities where we at, and it had to be for us without Washington, D.C. don't have nothing to do with us. Mm. It's an enclave. It's a foreign enclave. It's not a secret. Once so, again, doors are open. Come on in and ask a question. 
Go ahead, brother Ron. Right. Yeah. So it's a foreign enclave that is that nothing that it does supports the people from the land or that's living on the land. Everything that they do is to send funds to foreign entities and they don't do anything for us. <coughs> okay. Um, is there anything else you would like to um, give to the people, brother? <clears throat> no, it's over. Okay. The whole well, the whole construct is about to come tumbling down, and y'all about to see it. Let the people know where they can find you at, brother. If you got any contacts out there, let them know where they can find you. Normally, I'm on um, Instagram. My Instagram is the sick eight. My I've been in Facebook jail for three years, so I can just post over there, and that's Rod Hayes. Um, you catch me on Young Elder. You can go look back at some of the other stuff I did prior where when I was on Young Elder, I was going over certain receipts. And um, when I when I was on Brother Rich, we just, you know, we have a dialogue just like we're doing today. Right. And he, he just do Q&A. But you know, is my son. That's my son, man. Yeah. <laughs> brother, hey, look, that boy right there. That's that brother right there. Got a golden heart. That's my man right there. Yep, that's yeah. right. All right. Yeah, I, I watched you. I've been watching you for a while, man. I've seen, I know how y'all do. Y'all come on here, you you know, young Pharaoh. Yeah, you and know. All that. Yeah, I've been watching y'all for a minute. I know I know how the game go over here. Yeah. I just want, I just really wanted to come and say hi to you and to give you your flowers while I'm watching you because you've been in the game a long time, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, my biggest thing is to send people to the people that's doing the work. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I want everybody to know that I got um, a kickboxing champ, a kickboxing brother. I don't know if he's a champion, but the brother kickbox professionally, he will be here. And uh, we're going to interview the brother. I forgot the brother's name. His name is on. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, the brother will be here. I think maybe tomorrow I got to give him a call, see if we can set up something. I was supposed to have him today, but, um, things happen. Hey, my name is Jerry Norton. And I got caught up with a lot of stuff. And so we got him. Also, let me show y'all. We got, I finally got Captain Katazat in the ring. This is going to be, wow. This is Captain Tazoriak. He finally let him loose. And... His first tryout, he's going up against Lord Abba, who was just here. What nationality was Ruth? A Moabite or an Israelite? And so that's coming up this Friday. Y'all get y'all popcorn ready. Sit, <coughs> sit back, relax, and let's see Captain Katazat put that work in. And Lord Abba going to put that work in. So y'all getting some free entertainment right now with the information, with the knowledge, that's what make the debate so great because it's entertainment with the information that don't make it boring. And we learn from that. Understand, Malcolm said he loved debates because you learn from debates. Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, he has, he has so many debates, man, you know? And uh, Ashwa Kwesi had so many debates. The I love that, brother. Yeah, the only people that is afraid of debates are the ones who are afraid of getting a knowledge and information checked. It's easy to stand by yourself, but it becomes difficult when you got the opposite side waiting to debunk your information. That's why we say sauce up, sauce up. So uh, without any further ado, my brother, you got the last word. I just spoke to A.A. Rashid earlier today. You know A.A. Rashid? Um, not sure if I know him. All right. Yeah, I just spoke to A.A. Rashid, and A.A. will be with us sometime this week, bringing in that that uh, that uh occult knowledge, man. He is a beast. Trust me, Rich know very well of who these brothers are. He is a beast. So, I know. You, you, you took Rich through some schools uh, with some real heavy hitters. Yeah. With some right. real heavy hitters. So he, he, know, he, know, he know heavy hitters when he see them. That's right. So, brother, you got the last word. Um, I just want to say I appreciate you having me on your um, platform. 
come on to just have a general discussion. Like I say, I just mainly came over to give you your flowers and give you your big ups, especially for Brother Rich. I love that brother. He's like a little brother to me, man. I, you know, anytime you need me. But um, a lot of this stuff that I've been talking about over the five years is about to materialize. And a lot of people about to be shocked at the reality to the falsification of history and the misleading doctrines that's been dropped in our lap. All of this stuff got to come to the truth, to the surface. And one of the methods is that you've been the dying king of the conscious community. <laughs> you promoted some of the greatest debates on wax. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, at this point, um, I'm not really doing a lot like I was on social media because it's a lot going on in the background that I'm trying to pay attention to. And um, with that, you know, um, I don't know when I'll be on platforms. I'm not, you know, I'm not scheduling out, right? But um, I do have videos where I did come and bring the receipts. Uh, I, be, I, I bring receipts, you know, I don't have a problem with that. But it's just the day that I wasn't, you know, we only just met yesterday, you know, so. Right, so and, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, so I just wanted to, you know, You're spend this, some quality time with you for a minute, that's all. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. 